Sal Mayorano of the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle with Armin in the back on 104.5 The Team. He's at Bill's camp every dang day. And Sal, the quarterback position was somewhat of a disaster midway through the summer. How much more confidence should we have on the individual who will be throwing the football for the Bills come, uh, I don't know, early September? <laughs> well, at this point, the, the confidence meter really shouldn't be very high at all. None of them have stood out uh, to me in the first four days of camp. Um, Matt Castle is the veteran guy. He's been getting uh, a few more of the first team reps. I think Rex is just more comfortable with a veteran guy. He always has, but he favors veterans. And I think, you know, he likes, I think he wants to give Castle every opportunity possible to go ahead and win the job. Now, that being said, you know, EJ Manuel is also in a situation where he's the Bills' first round draft pick from two years ago. There may be factions inside that building that are hoping that EJ. Yeah, is the guy so they can justify picking him uh, in the first round. So he's been getting, you know, probably close to the amount of reps Castle has. And then they've been working in Taylor, um, who's kind of a wild card in this whole thing. Nobody really knows anything about Tyrod Taylor. He's the unproven commodity. I think as we go on here, you know, Rex has made it very clear he wants all three to get equal reps. So that might flip in the next few days and it might get turned around. But right now, nobody has stood out. They've all struggled, and really the biggest reason is none of them are very good, but this defense is also very good. And this defense is causing a lot of problems uh, early on here. Now, when, when you talk about the three quarterbacks, Tyrod Taylor, how realistic is it that he gets that, that shot at that job, and, and how much of that is the fact that it seems like Rex Ryan just likes his skill set, his ability to run with the football? Yeah, he does. I mean, he's been talking him up ever since they signed him. And once again, I still I just don't see it. I mean, I can't – when I look at practice and I see him out there taking the reps, he's just a small guy. And I just – it's so hard to envision a guy who's six foot one with really no experience. He's played – he was the backup for four years for Joe Flacco and threw 35 NFL passes in mop-up duty. So he really has no NFL experience. You know, at least when Doug Flutie was running around at five foot eleven – you knew that Flutie could make some plays. He might have been limited in some of the things he did, but you knew at some point Flutie would help you win a game. I just can't see Tyrod Taylor being that guy. I might be blown away, totally surprised, and he, he comes up and wins the job. But if I, had to, if I had to say right now, do I think he'll be the starter opening day, I'd have to say no. Sami Aran of the Rochester Democrat Chronicle, he has on the daily basis uh, where the quarterbacks are at and the percentage of who is going to start uh, once the season gets here. And right now, Matt Castle is leading that percentage. And Sal, you mentioned that EJ Manuel has some guys in the front office that feel invested in him since they drafted him. But that feeling has to be weaker, doesn't it? I mean, this coaching staff probably doesn't all at all feel that they have to uh, fully develop EJ Manuel because they're not the ones that drafted him. Would you agree? Yeah, you're, you're right, because when EJ was, was drafted, you know, Doug Whaley was the GM, Doug Marone was in his first year as the coach, they went in on that together. So, yeah, he was clearly the consensus pick for that regime. Now, Doug Whaley, obviously, is still the general manager here, but you're right, Rex Ryan has full control over this roster now. He, he, there's no doubt about that, and if he goes to Whaley and says, look, this guy can't play, I don't want him, Whaley will not blink, and they will swallow their pride, and they'll either release him or whatever they do. If he becomes a third string or second, I don't know what they'll do with him. What, what, but yeah, absolutely. This is Rex Ryan's call and Greg Roman, the offensive coordinator. They will they will make the final decision. It won't be Doug Whaley saying, hey, we picked him in the first round, you got to keep him. That, that won't happen. ESPN's Adam Schefter mentioned it to us yesterday. You agree that it's a realistic possibility that if E.J. Manuel is not productive in camp, he will not make the 53-man roster? Yeah, it's, it's possible. Um, I, the, with the, one of the rumors that was going around here cause in the off-season program, and again, it's so hard to judge anything, and I and I try to stay away from that. But many of my colleagues here, you know, kept pointing out how bad Castle looked in the off-season program, and, and some of the speculation was that if he continues to stink in training camp, they'll cut him, and they can save like four point two million on the salary cap, and then go with Manuel Taylor and you know Matt Sims is here. He could be a third-string guy. Now, you come to training camp, and if Castle ends up doing pretty well, and if he wins this job outright, yeah, there's a very good possibility they might keep Tyrod Taylor as the backup. But they do seem to like him. Keep Matt, St- Matt Sims as your clipboard carrier and cut ties with EJ. That very well could happen. 
So, Sal, there's a realistic possibility that Matt Sims makes this roster over either Matt Castle or E.J. Manuel. Yeah, I mean, unless they want to go out like they did last year and go find you know some retread veteran who happens to get cut. You know, Kyle Ward happened to be sitting around last year in semi-retirement, and when Manuel, uh, when they had trouble with the backup position, they went and got him, and then he ends up you know starting the last 12 games. You know, they could do something like that, but Matt Sims right now is kind of like, you know, and the thing is, I've never seen a fourth string quarterback get more reps than Matt Sims has. They really are. They do these two spot drills where they've got they've got groups going at the same time. The Greg Roman thing, and I guess Rex has not done this before, and they are getting a lot more reps in training camp, and it's allowing you know Matt Sims to get some time. So, you know, hey, he served as as, as Rex's third string quarterback last year. He actually played a little bit, I think, at the end of the year. So I think Rex knows him. Um, likes him, you know. I don't think he thinks he can be a starter, but yeah, sure. I mean, if they're going to cut Castle or Manuel. Matt Sims is here learning the offense. Why not keep him around to be the third stringer? Sal Mayorana of the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle with Armin in the back, 104.5 the team, at Sal Mayorana on Twitter. He's at Bills Camp Daily. Sal, what are the odds that the Bills are going to be able to have a quarterback that's good enough to maintain the office to get offense to get them into the postseason? I think, I think Castle or Manuel have a chance to be game managers in this offense. This offense is predicated on the running game. You know, we've been saying it right ever since they required they acquired LaShawn McCoy. They're going to try to run the ball. So they need a quarterback, and, and every quarterback hates the term game manager, but that's really what they need is a guy who can just not screw it up. I, I'm sure I've told you that before. They're going to get the ball to McCoy. They're going to get the ball to you know Fred Jackson when he comes in. They're going to throw short passes to Charles Clay and, and McCoy out of the backfield. And when they do get, go downfield, then, you know, Sammy Watkins, Percy Harvin, Robert Woods get involved. But they're not going to take, I don't think, a lot of chances in the passing game. So just have a quarterback who can function, not turn the ball over, and make a play or two when he needs to make a play or two. And I think if they get that kind of quarterback play with this defense and pretty good special teams, I think the Bills can definitely be in contention for a playoff spot. So when you talk about game managers, when you talk about screen passes and running game, your offensive line coach becomes pretty important. What what does the Aaron Cromer saga mean to the Bills moving forward? Yeah, I mean, Cromer was back last night. He came back to the team, and he'll serve a six-game suspension when the regular season gets underway. So, you know, actually for the Bills, it's, it's good that he's here in training camp because this is the most vital time for the, the teaching and the installation and all that. So he came back to work last night. Yeah, he's a good offensive line coach. He's got a good resume. As, as a coach in, in the NFL, um, his situation was not a good was not a good look for him or the organization. But I think they did the right thing with the six games, and luckily they've got a guy in Kurt Anderson who uh, has been with the Bills. This is his fifth year as the assistant offensive line coach. He worked for the uh, Chan Gailey staff, Doug Marones, and, and Rex Ryan kept him around, so he must like him. He was there the whole off season with Cromer, uh, learning the techniques along with the players and how Cromer teaches things. I think they're going to be just fine. The issue with the offensive line is they got to go play now. They got to go put the pads on and prove that whatever Cromer taught them in the offseason, they can go out and apply because this offensive line was not good at all the last two years when uh, when Doug Marone was the coach. Richie Incognito going to start at left guard. Is that a testament to how good he is or how bad this Bills line is? Well, I think um, I wouldn't say that it's because the Bills line is so bad. I mean, clearly there was an opportunity for Incognito at left guard or right guard, wherever they put him. And I think he clearly is the best guard on the team. There's no question about that. So you knew he'd be a starter going in. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put it either way uh, in, in those terms. He just is a, he's a, I said this when they signed him back in February. I love the signing. You know, regardless of his personal issues that he's had through the years, the guy is a good football player. If he keeps his head on straight, he can help the Bills because he's the best guard on the team right now. Sammy Watkins, how is he looking right now through camp coming off this hip injury in the offseason? Yeah, he looks great. I mean, in fact, last night they had a night practice, and he was dynamic. He, he, he scored uh, two long touchdowns. He blew by Stefan Gilmore, who's the best cornerback of the team, just made a gorgeous move and just left him in the dust. And then he did it about five minutes later to some scrub. But he's looked good. You know, when the ball, when the quarterbacks can get the ball to Sammy, the guy makes every play there is. I mean, that's the issue. Can they get the ball to him? Because he will be open. And when he was open plenty last year, you go back and look at the tape and the all 22, you know, you'll see plenty of instances where Sammy was open and the quarterback just either didn't get the ball to him or went to a different read 
and it was probably pretty frustrating for him. So that's going to be the key. they got to find the guy to get the ball to Sammy. Sal, I'm looking at some of the reports from camp. Percy Harvin is getting reps at cornerback? Yeah, he did that. He kind of volunteered to do it the first day. I don't think he's done it since. Um, Leotis McKelvin is out right now. So they were a little bit short at cornerback, and I think Percy just figured, hey, you know, let me, let me give it a try. If I could help in some way, you know, at least test it out now in training camp. And Rex was all for it. He said, hey, great, go, go give it a shot. So he took a few reps the first day. I don't think I've seen him doing that since. Um, we don't know what McKelvin's status is. Right now he's in street clothes. Um, and they just signed the kid off the street the other day for really for camp reps. So they should be okay now at cornerback. And, of course, you have a story today as well at the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle uh, on Bill's rookie corner, Ronald Darby. That's available right now. You can check out Sal's Twitter account, at Sal Mariana, to read that. And, Sal, I'm most intrigued. Your voice lit up, and you sounded illuminated earlier when you dropped a quick hint of how good this defense is looking. Why is this defense looking so good at this point in camp? Well, first of all, they've just got a tremendous amount of talent at all three levels. I mean, they're just a really good, solid defense. They were last year. Um, the only guys they lost in the offseason were Denora Cersei, who played strong safety. And you can you can count Brandon Spikes in that because Spikes, you know, was generally effective on first and second down against the run. But they're going to they're gonna fill those positions very easily with the guys they have on the roster. And now you add Rex Ryan to the mix. You know, you give Rex this kind of talent, you know, say what you want about Rex, but this guy knows defense. He knows how to coach defense. Um, his staff is a very good defensive staff. I think the Bills, the sky's the limit for the defense. If they stay healthy, I think they can be a dominant, uh, a dominant defense really at all three levels. Sal Mayeron of the Rochester Democrat and Chronicle is at practice every day. He's updating the quarterback situation in every day and everything that you need to know as a Bills and NFL fan. Our buddy Sal. Sal, we're going to be out at uh, Bills camp within the next couple weeks. We'll let you know when we're there. We'll have to hang out, maybe get a garbage plate together, see what Woo-hoo! happens, get crazy. And uh, we'll, we look forward to seeing you in a few weeks, my friend. All right, man. Let me know when you're here and we'll do it.